On today's episode, how to say anything to a girl. Uh-oh, your relationship has been deflowered. And we celebrate Meatloaf Awareness Month. All that and more on today's episode of Bad Advice with Lori Beth Denberg. Help me out, almighty Lori Beth Denberg. Give me that vital information so I get the red thoughts. Who do you yeah. The church of Lori Beth is in session and we're reading from the scriptures of vital information. Talk to my goddess and my savior, my LBT. Just tell me what's going on with me. Oh my goddess and my savior, my LBT. Just tell me what's going on with me. What? Is Lori Beth Thunberg, and welcome to the Bad Advice Podcast. Woo! With me, as always, is Clark Crozer. Hello. Hello, Clark. How are you? I am doing well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am enjoying our nice enough weather, which is turning into unbearably hot weather. Yes, yes, very we are, quickly. We are scheduled for a difficult week. <laughs> Uh, difficult for you, maybe. I have a pool. And the I know. hotter it is, the warmer my pool gets because I have that solar heater. You do. Well, even before you have a good boy pool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's the pretty the pretty cool thing. I love it when it gets hot. Well, I'll be right over. <laughs> Wait, you're here. Jesus. Oh, oh, that's right. <laughs> but I don't have my suit. This is about to get very intimate. <laughs> I blame Al Gore. If he yeah. hadn't opened his mouth, we wouldn't be in this situation. <laughs> That's true. Since it's mid May at 92 degrees. Um, but it is mid May, which means we just passed Mother's Day. Yeah. So tell me about my Mother's Day. Your Mother's Day with the two and a half mother figures in your life. <laughs> no, I just uh, I just uh, dealt with two of them this year. Okay. Uh, yeah, my my wife and my kid and my parents. We all. Kind of spent the day together, and we Ooh. went. Uh, there's a an amazing little restaurant that's tucked into the Topanga Canyon, like the you know the hill up and over, mm-hmm. going to the beach. Uh, there's this really amazing little like, kind of hippie place. It's like it's called Inn of the Seventh Ray or something. Oh, jeez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All quinoa all the time. Yeah, it's like really fancy, fancy shit. Uh, but it was really good. It had a, a breakfast brunch. Uh, oh, type for of Mother's thing Day for special. Mother's Day, yeah. Uh, so it was all like fancy pantsy uh, food, but it was all you can eat fancy pantsy oh, food. Oh, we like that. So it was like, all right, well, I'll have uh, more quinoa, please. Yes. Um, and then uh, we all went to the Getty. There's two Getty. The Getty museums. Villa. The Getty Villa. Yes. We went to the Getty Villa, and that was pretty awesome. I have a question about the Getty Villa. Yes. The the last time I was there, maybe the only time I was there. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. I No, I've been there twice. I I really want to get this worked out. Hold on. Let me get my entire life's calendar out. Um, I went there as a chaperone for my friend's high school class that was going on a trip. Oh, nice. They needed a certain amount of people. Nice. And her brother, who I'm also friends with, and I went to take our group of six, you know, teenagers around and all this kind of stuff. So one of the things that's... It's iconic about the Getty Villa. And for those of you who don't know, the Getty is a big museum. Right. And then this is kind of an adjunct, smaller deal. That's literally like across the street from the beach. Yes. Like you can see the ocean from the Getty, Getty Villa. Yeah. And it's it's really cool. But one of the iconic things is a giant, not giant, but a large reflecting pool yeah. kind of a, a, this lovely kind of long, long, long. stone water yeah. source and when i was there it was it was full mm. but as our drought continued they drained it really they drained it they said yeah it's our thing but there's not water and we don't want to maintain it and wow. use the water. So was it full of water again? It was a hundred percent full of water. And oh, we're, excellent. Our, our drought is worse than ever. I, I, no, well, we got a bunch of rain recently, That's but true. we're still pretty crispy, yeah. but they did do that, which I thought was, was pretty kick ass. Yeah, good for them, man. That's yeah. awesome. So your experience at the Getty Villa was amazing. How many pr- priceless statues did Lex knock over? <laughs> None. 
But it was, I would have. This was the kind of the first time because he's he just turned seven. Yes. So this was really that first time that we were walking around a museum and he really understood what everything was. And we could go to something and go, oh, wow, see this pot? This pot was made 2,500 years ago. And he'd Whoa. be like, whoa, that's crazy. And like, yeah, I, I know, picture. It's crazy. I'm picturing when he said at the Hollywood Bowl after uh, Enigo Montoya killed the guy, he goes, yeah. that was savage. <laughs> that was great. It was awesome. That was pretty amazing. So that's cool. He yeah. kind of getting me lay of the land of artwork. And... Yeah, and he was really kind of paying attention. He loved all of the... Uh... The, like, coins and jewelry stuff. Ooh, pocketed how many? <laughs> yeah. He's, like, the nicest kid, and uh, I yeah. always say these jokes like he's gonna, like, he's a real well, troublemaker. He, he does have a kleptomaniac past. You're, yes. Do you remember that? He, what? He, when he was an infant, like, he was still being pushed in his stroller, uh -huh. we went to the Northridge Mall, and we were walking around the Northridge Mall, and we, uh, of course, went into a gap or something. We go out into the parking lot and we start pulling him out of the stroller to put him in his car seat. And in his stroller were like five things from the dad <laughs> that he had just grabbed and just kind of stuck underneath him in the stroller. And we just walked out of them. So I took the stuff back. And I brought it back to the gap. I'm like, oh, sorry, my son grabbed this. Oh, and my I brought God. It back. And then I came back to the car and he had an extra pair of sunglasses. Like I missed the sun. <laughs> so I'm like, you know what? You get to keep the sunglasses yes. at that point. You win. That's so funny. I wonder if security didn't see it. They were just like, they're not on our radar. Or if they were like, hey, oh, that's oh, adorable. That's adorable. <laughs> exactly. Like, oh, don't wake him. He looks so sweet when he's sleeping. Oh, lexicon. I yeah. didn't I don't think I knew that no. story. Yeah, that was Well, that's that what's funny, funny is it's from the gap. Like I thought you were gonna say we were in the Disney store oh, and no. we found it's not like, yeah, he wasn't going for cartoony things. He no. was just like, hmm, he, that's, he's this really feels soft. I'm going to put this in my uh Really stroller. scoping it out for what had resale value. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. He was looking up on eBay on my phone. Yeah. Mm. Hmm. This is a high-end <laughs> brand. I can get $45 for this necklace. <laughs> We also should talk to our audience here because we've yes. been putting out a few things that they might need a little clarification Yes. On. Well, we have, for the last, uh, over the last couple weeks, yeah. put out lost episodes. That's right. And these were recorded <laughs> in January. We kind of talked about it a little bit, when, little we, bit. when we started this train back up. <laughs> but those were recorded in January. Then I got sick and lost my voice and yeah. all, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, and so we're still putting them out, but they're a little out of context. <laughs> so Clark made a thing that goes, the lost episodes, <laughs> to really mark them in, in time and let you know why we're saying Happy New Year. Uh, I believe for anyone out there uh, listening, I believe that would be episodes 58 and 59. Yes, 58 and 59, which came out after episode 60. 60. <laughs> were lost but they weren't that yeah lost. well that's what i i was thinking that when i was working editing them it's like these haven't been lost that long but still 58 and 59 coming out after 60 also highlights my failure to plan ahead and my problems with math it's, it's perfect it's bad advice uh, but uh, now that we have that, I think we should, we do have a few uh, non-lost episodes, including this one that we still need to record. Yes! So uh, let's move on to some questions uh, and uh, we can start doling out the bad advice. Excellent. All right. So uh, question number one here, uh, this is a, a little personal, a little personal. Oh. We, you know, usually it's very random what the, the questions that are sent to you. Yeah. This one's a little bit more personal and I, okay. I wanted to- I'm interested. Uh, so this is from Lenore, and Lenore asks, how was it working on Steve Harvey's show with the late Merlin Santana, and what do you oh. remember most about him? Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a good question. That's a, a thoughtful, deeper question. Yeah, a little personal about but, but, you. And before I get into the answer, which I, you know, I have stuff. Yeah. 
Do you think, wasn't it Lenore that had the stray cow? Oh my God, could it be? It was, I believe that that question asker is that the cow victim. Yes. Her name was Lenore, so it could be. Which, by the way, if you're out there and that cow is still missing, please, we need to know what's been going on. Yeah, we well, got she one said, update. I do remember, and this is very important before I talk about my <laughs> dead friend that was murdered, <laughs> um, not to be too flippant about it, <laughs> that the cow, she did check in with us a few times, yeah, yeah. and the cow had disappeared. Yeah. But that so, was months ago. But it hasn't come back. That's the question. Lenore hasn't come back. <laughs> if it was even Lenore, what am I banking on? My great memory. Yeah. But this Lenore has asked about Merlin Santana. Yeah. A lot of people know that I was on the Nickelodeon and all that and right. figure it out. And people love, they're like, I loved you on Workaholics. <laughs> I was on there for like two, two seconds. seconds. <laughs> I worked also, I was on the Steve Harvey show mm. for three or four seasons. Yeah. And I played one of the students as a high school show. Show. Yeah. So as a 25-year-old, I played a high school student, right. of course. The two boys were my little cohorts, were Romeo and Bullethead, Will Lee Scott, the white guy, <laughs> and Merlin Santana, who was this black guy, this like super hot. He was the one that was always ripping his shirt oh, off. No. All the chicken heads loved him. Oh. And he was very sweet, yeah. kind of a little... Not blank, but just kind of like, what's going on here? You know, mm. just going through his life, doing his thing. I think he had been a rapper. I think he had been, you know, a few things in entertainment. Sure. He's an actor. Sure. And he was murdered. Yeah. He was with a friend of his, and it was late at night. They were in the car after going to a club or whatever. Mm. Mm. And a few people came up, shot him a lot of times, and wow. I believe the driver was not hurt. Wow. So it seemed very pointed yeah. and very, you know, specific. Good going. Yeah. And what I remember, what I remember most about this, this is what's really interesting. This is the first time, it, one of those times where I feel like I had a show business moment. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I found out, I remember exactly, I was in my apartment in the drug den. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was working on a project for Nickelodeon, writing interstitials mm. to be used for the premiere of the Wild Thornberries movie. Oh, wow. And uh, me and another friend were working on them, writing ins and outs and that kind of thing. And the TV was on, but mm. it was muted. And I see his picture come up. Oh, no. And in instantly, I knew that something had happened. I knew that he was dead. Oh. And I turned it up, and that is what had oh. happened. So I get the information that someone I know and liked and worked with yeah. died yeah. on the news. Oh, my God. And this is after the show was over, right? Yes, this was after the show had not been over that long. Okay. But it was after the show had wrapped, wrapped. and we were done. Yeah. So that is one of the very stark instances of like of show businessiness yeah that geez, show business is not all glamorous yeah it's it was very strange sensation of i just heard on the news yeah that my friend died it was very very strange wow. and we weren't you know hanging out every right. night right, 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 i right. did not go out to the club <laughs> that's not anything i ever would have done ever was there a significant age difference you know you talked about you were in your 20s like no a we were all everyone on tv that's well, a high school student is yeah is in their 20s yeah. so we were approximately the same age okay. i think he had a young daughter oh. Oh, he was from new york and, uh, you know, but we were shooting in L.A. Mm. And what I just remember about him was he would just be, he'd just be like, yeah, cool, whatever, man, and <laughs> doing his stuff. But he would always be eating. Oh, no. He would be eat. I would say he's eating on the count, which <laughs> means to those of you who are not famous actresses, <laughs> you know, but you see it in other TV and movies where they're about to shoot and the, the stage director goes in five, right. four. 
three, two, and then it's action. <laughs> right. He would just always be eating a bowl of like tuna casserole. <laughs> And, like, put it down on three, <laughs> wipe his mouth on two. Oh, no. One didn't happen, and then he'd go into the scene. Oh, my God. So every time. That's and there's always so craft funny. services on set. There's always fun stuff. <laughs> um, but that's what I remember the most. It's just in this funny kind of hapless like he'd be it's like he'd be there having a snack and be like oh what we're oh we're doing a tv show oh, all right oh. and he'd go in and just be funny and his character was the stupid one okay. his character would just like not understand what was said and make some <laughs> okay. comment it was fun and yeah. funny and then he'd take his shirt off <laughs> And that was you know that's what i remember about him oh. but his his death was very I mean, it's obviously tragic and yeah, surreal yeah. and strange. And there were there were arrests and there were okay. trials and I believe there were convictions. Wow! So this um, this wasn't like a Tupac thing where they never found out. This was no. Like... I, I I if I'd known, I would have looked it up before and gotten you the <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, gotten you the information. <laughs> Everyone, go watch Court TV. Yeah. Uh, so that was it, it's very strange and mm. and sad yeah. and. It, that's that's kind of the deal, but he's a nice, sweet guy. A surreal way for a friendship to end. Yeah, he was just very goofy and hungry. <laughs> well, uh, I hope that helps, Lenore. Um, uh, that was really, that was a good question. I like that question. Um, let's move on, though. Uh, I've got another question here. Actually, I'm very excited because we, you ready for this? What? Have a phone call. I love phone calls. It has been a while. Hi, my name's Carell, calling from out of Mount Sterling, Kentucky. I have a question for Miss Lori Beth. I'm going to need some advice. I'm trying to talk to somebody that is a little older than me, smarter than me, but I'm trying to get things in perspective. Like my license, my car, because I have epilepsy. So what some advice can you tell me to help me out? And thank you. Thank you, Carell. Yeah. That is... Awesome (laughs) that you have someone you are interested in. Yeah. And I completely understand (laughs) having someone you're interested in and going, but here are all the things that are wrong with me that make (laughs) this never going to happen. (laughs) Unfortunately, I know exactly what is going on. It's not troublesome, but it makes me go, come on, Corral, when you say this person is smarter than me and older than me. I mean, older is fine. fine. Cuter than me. To say she's smarter than you and that you're somehow lesser because you're trying to get your stuff together. You have epilepsy, which is not the same as I have five DUIs. (laughs) I have to explain this on my dating site. <laughs> and you're trying to get yourself together. I, it's not... To say she's smarter than me, that's not real. Yeah. She could be... I mean, don't get me wrong. I've met plenty of people that went to college <laughs> and have PhDs, and I go, high school was kind of a thing. <laughs> I think I remember showing up there a few times. <laughs> I remember. But there are different kinds of intelligence. You are sweet ah. and interested and wanting to explore this person who you like and you're enamored of. Right. Uh, that doesn't mean you have to have had the same amount of education. It's different people are a good match a lot of times. And uh, there's a lot of times where they're good because they're different. Yeah, it's kind of like what this made me think of is how me and my friend uh, Abby are, this goes back to the dishwasher that we installed and de-stalled and installed the new one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go back and listen to the catalog (laughs) for information about that. But it, occurred to me in the moment when we were going to get the dishwasher I said I just figured out that you're white collar and I'm blue collar (laughs) and we make a good team exactly so people complement each other and also 
you have things to learn from each other because one has experiences that the other one doesn't. Exactly. It'd be interesting to me to hear, I'm speaking to a man, huh? but he, you know, he, he went to high school and college, <laughs> so I can hear stories about that. Exactly. Or other jobs he's had that I have not had. Exactly. And that stuff is interesting, and you can learn not only about each other, but about things you have never encountered. Yes. And that is... A good thing. Yes, that's a absolutely. very good thing. Honestly, I really do feel like the whole the the, the myth of uh, leagues is just that a myth. Yep, it's a myth. There are no leagues. You cannot be out of another person league. You have no clue whether somebody might just randomly find you attractive or not. Yes. You don't know because everyone's different and everyone has different interests. And you don't know how low that other person's self-esteem is. Exactly. So they might just go for it. <laughs> but it's true. I feel like I see couples all the time that are like, wow, they're just so different from each other but they work so well together. Yes. And that's really the the only important part, right? Yes. And then as far as you have epilepsy, that is your life. Yeah. And if anybody is going to have a problem with that, I don't, you know, there are times when you meet someone and you like them and you say, I need you to, think about a career yeah i need your car to not have three wheels and no windshield right. are you planning to get more together right but you don't say to someone uh i don't like that you have cancer can you work on that <laughs> yes, exactly you don't you know i know you had an amputated <laughs> leg and you have a wooden one now but that's not going to work for me yeah, exactly because that's a right off the bat you know deal breaker yeah <laughs> but the problem with things like that is i come to a relationship with things that i'm self-conscious about yep. that i feel badly about yeah. and i take it oh i'm not good enough blah 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 but really it's up to whoever I'm connecting with yeah, or not connecting exactly. with to say, hey, that's you. Let's let's talk. Let's whatever. Yeah. Wink. <laughs> and if you're encountering somebody who has a problem with something fundamental about you, there's no relationship that's going to happen there anyway. Right. Like you're gonna gotta like hide your epilepsy. If it if it crops up, I'll just have to go to the store real quick. <laughs> you need to have someone who not only understands you and understands what's going on, but who's willing to help if you need help. If yeah. if you have a seizure, if you there, I know there's different kinds of epilepsy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you need help and support, your partner would be someone who would do that for you. Otherwise, Absolutely. it's not much of a partnership. Yeah, that's exactly right. So I would say, depending on who this person is, you might talk to them, email them. I don't know. I wish we knew more. Yeah, like, right? She's the girl at the donut shop. He should approach her and talk to her about this show. Yes. Yo, you could. Right? You should just send her this episode. <laughs> or, or just play it on a boom box above your head outside her window. <laughs> Like John Cusack and say go. anything, which you're probably too young to have even seen. Even people <laughs> who haven't seen and love that movie know that image of him holding the boombox. That might have gone off topic about <laughs> finding someone who loves you even though you have epilepsy. If this person is someone that you could be with, be friends with, have some sort of connection with, then say hi. Yeah. Say you know, you kind of don't want to go up first and go, we should go somewhere. <laughs> right. We should go somewhere together. Right. Darkly lit and secluded. <laughs> Dress nice. <laughs> but just approach them as though they're somebody who will be receptive. Yeah. Because if they are, that's what you want. If they're not... In a bad way. Yeah. You go, okay, well, don't think Dodge I'd want to talk to you. One. Exactly. Yeah. And if there's just a, I mean, you could always get the, oh, I have a boyfriend. Right. And, you know, is that true or not? <laughs> Who knows? But 
I would say just start a casual conversation. Yeah. Ask about, you know, hey, how's your day going? Yeah. How's, this is when I wish I knew who they were. Right, exactly. Because I, 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 if it's your boss, I have some different advice. <laughs> if it's your cousin, I have some different advice. <laughs> Hopefully something in there helped, Corel. Before we uh, go too far off topic, it's our rotating segment of the week. Get ready for the worst recap in America. Yes, yes, yes. I have been on the television again, Yay. which is very nice. Yeah. I was a has-been, and now I'm a currently is-been. Currently is. Uh, <laughs> so I am, I'm sure most of you know, on the newest episode of The Worst Cooks in America. Yes. It is a 90s edition celebrity season. Yeah. So we thought we would spend the next few episodes for the next few weeks kind of uh, using this time during the rotating segment to kind of dig in to some of these episodes so that you guys out there listening can uh, get a little behind the scenes dirt and gossip and <laughs> yes. fun shit. So. Who fucked who? <laughs> Stay tuned. They're going to show it. Uh, so it was really fun. This offer to be part of the show just came to me. Things randomly come to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, we've, we've talked before that there have been other reality shows that have come to you that you've turned down. What was it about this one that you were like, oh, this kind of sounds interesting? This seemed really fun. It's not a salacious yes. yuck fest. Yes. And... It was a 90s theme. Like, yeah. I fit into it. I, yeah. Some other reality shows, I would feel, oh, is this kind of desperate to be relevant? Yeah. But this one was a 90s themed, and it just seemed fun. Yeah. I was in extraordinarily suited to the worst <laughs> cooks in America. That's true. So, That's true. That's and, true. And when I first spoke with a producer... They seemed very excited oh, nice. about, they yeah, ask questions. Oh, how do you cook? What's your skill level? What's something you've made? And with every yeah. failure that oh, I no. related, she was just like, oh, this is perfect. Oh, that's great. Yes. So I, you know, got to be on that show. We shot it in... New York. That's cool. It was very cool, except, yeah. well, there's a lot of good stuff to say. I'm just going to complain for a minute. <laughs> they put us in a hotel that they thought would be fancier and better for oh, the nice. celebrities. Nice. This hotel was a douchebag. Oh, no. Our hotel had a man bun. Oh, no. And they just sucked. And it was in Brooklyn, and I'm not going to name it, oh. mostly because I don't remember the name. <laughs> okay. But just really poor service, and you'd call down to the front desk, and no one would answer. Uh, and I went down there in the middle of the night, no one was there. Uh, then the next day, the guy that was supposed to be there was like, if I'm helping someone else, I can't answer the phone. And I'm like, if you're smoking crack out back, you're not in front, and I see that. Uh, he wasn't, I don't know that he was, yeah. that's libelous. But I, didn't, <laughs> but I also didn't say the name of yeah, the hotel exactly. or him. Exactly. Uh, so it was just a douchebaggery, but also it was in Brooklyn, which is hip, yeah. and there was a bar on the top floor, and all these people would come in. Uh, so they seemed more focused on that. Okay. And all the cast, we all have the same experience. Oh, it's God. kind of a joke that you call the front desk and you just get the recording oh. forever and ever and ever until it hangs up on you. Oh, my God. But, I mean, that's a... I feel like that's such a petty thing. No, but, but it's it, it true. Was, it was really interesting because the show was, the show was, I'm sure you can see from the first episode that's been out. Yeah. It's really hard and it's really yeah. stressful. It's really yeah. intense. Yeah. It's really, really intense. Something I learned on the show, which by the way, I had never met any of the other okay. people in the cast. Okay. I thought at least I'd run into so who's yeah. going to do it? But I had never met any of them. Huh. And so that was super groovy cool. Nice. I met, here's Matthew Lawrence yeah. and Jody Sweeten. Yeah, I watched yeah, Full yeah. House every week. Sure, sure. Um, Tracy I'm, Gold. Tracy Gold, Growing Pains, give me a break. Yeah. So I had never met any of these people. 
and that was wonderful. Everyone that worked on the show was wonderful. Oh, and Burrell, the host, is intense yeah. and fun. And Jeff Morrow, who was Your my coach. team captain, yeah. my celebrity chef, yeah. just such a yummy smush. I really hope to see him. I was going to ask, is he calling for any advice and uh, how to cook anything? <laughs> no, and... he is not. No. He is not. <laughs> But he knows not. He knows better. <laughs> He's probably calling up to see how many times I've cut myself with a knife lately. To make sure you're getting all the blood you need. But he was great. I felt really lucky to be on his team. Nice. And everyone was so, so great. That's awesome. Yes. How fun. That must have been a really fun shoot, too. It was really fun, even though it was high stress, because yeah. it's a game show, oh, essentially. Yeah. And then I'm trying to be funny, and I'm, like, sweating everywhere. That's really the thing. I feel like it's not, you know, cooking shows are considered reality shows, but stuff like this, it really isn't. It really is more of a game show yeah. than a cooking show. It, it's just a game show that has, like, you know you're the same contestants every week for six, eight weeks. Yeah, well, or one less as people go to game show hell. <laughs> exactly. So it is, but you're right. And that's, like I said before, part of why yeah. I said, yeah, this sounds fun. It's not salacious. Yeah. They're not. And they made that really clear to me. Like, that's awesome. We're not here to make anyone look bad or stupid or scandalous. That's great. So it was it was a really fun kind of pure experience. Okay, well, uh, let's talk more specifically about episode one. So okay. in this first episode, uh, I'll take you through it since, uh, you know. I'm the audience. You were just in it. Yes. Uh, um, I go... can't be expected to remember all of my <laughs> dealings. You go through the intros. You meet all the other contestants and the and the two celebrity chefs. Uh, and then you do what was called the baseline challenge yes. so that they could determine your cooking skill. I so you weren't meal. really judged on these as much as they were kind of like, seeing how you cook. Yes. So how was that? That was the, you cooked fried chicken? I cooked, they did ask prior to the show, what's something you do cook? Okay. And I gave, I said, I've made fried chicken and mac and cheese, which I meant from the box. <laughs> Right. Like That's what I cheese. meant. And they have to ask that. Well, all, every other challenge and thing, we had no idea what sure, it was. Sure, sure. This was just the, the first Yeah, one. and they had to know what we wanted to cook because right. they have to get those ingredients. Right. It's not right, like right, I show right. up and go, where's my chicken and flour mixture? Right. Hold, we got to go to the store. <laughs> so that was the one, the only one that I knew what I was going to do. Everybody knew what they were going to come in with. Right. And you knew, but you didn't prepare. I, well, I didn't prepare. I was, I wanted to live up to the title of the show. <laughs> yes, what did. I was really nervous about yeah. is what happened. Killing people. No, I didn't. I didn't kill anybody because <laughs> most of them were smart enough not to eat it. Oh. Uh, how pink should your, I want my chicken medium rare. <laughs> But that is something I thought okay. going into it is I don't have any idea how long things should really cook. And what I do is when I've been making fried chicken on my own at yeah. home, yeah. I will go, is this done yet? And I'll cut into it. Sure. And that's when I see it's completely raw. Yeah, exactly. But thinking of a restaurant, you don't get your chicken cut in half. <laughs> A little bit so I can see if it's done. Right. You would hope the chef would know. Exactly. So I said, I can't do that. I was worried about undercooking the chicken, yeah. which was everything that happened. And let me just say, uh, they keep using that one line of yours of the yes. like uh, salmonella. Uh, I'm going to kill joke. everyone with yeah. salmon. Something like that. In like all the promos. Yes. In the I'm funny. I'm, on. I'm a bad cook. But I'm good TV. <laughs> yes, you are. Very so, much but so. it's interesting because with reality TV shows, with any TV show, yeah. but less with a scripted show, with reality TV, you shoot tons and tons and tons of footage. Yes. You know, if you can imagine, there's a camera focused on every contestant. Everybody has all of this coverage and all of this stuff. So I've been wondering. 
you know, what what are they going to use of mine? Right, I, this is what's going through my mind. Because as, as a viewer, watching this show, knowing you, like, uh, yeah, I'm a little biased, but I still <laughs> do think that you are getting the best jokes in every episode. Like, you're just naturally, you have, like, quick zingers, and they're really funny. But I'm sitting there watching the show going, I can almost guarantee you that there is about 10 times as many jokes as what they're airing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and we're getting, like, the smallest part of it. Yes, that was... Very interesting to see what made it into the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. Because I was kind of sure when we were doing, after the baseline challenge, we all sat down at the table yes. and tried everyone's dishes. Most yeah. people did not try mine. <laughs> and they might have eaten the mac and cheese that okay. I made with real cheese. I just went for it. <laughs> just I, put a wheel of cheese in a pan. Pretty and much. It. Nice. I, you see me putting the cheese in and going, I don't know. This can't be right. <laughs> and then I apologize to the cow. Oh, no. Who did all this hard work just for this to happen? <laughs> and but we're sitting there, my chickenish yeah. cookedness gets plated out to everyone. Most people are looking at it going, mm -hmm. <laughs> and they asked Jody right there, well, what do you think about you know Lori Best Dish? And she was worried she was cooking right next to me and she said well i was a little worried <laughs> and i said what worried you was it me shouting this chicken is raw this chicken is raw over and over <laughs> and i thought i just thought that was really funny, and, funny. but they didn't use that they have to cover yeah, everybody so yeah. i can give you all the best jokes that that don't make it in as nice. the episodes there there you go the worst scenario that i thought could happen well yeah. no i mean i could have singed my hair off on the stove I guess. <laughs> right. the stoves were so big and professional they had oh, so many knobs nice. there was never one time where i instinctively knew which knob would turn on which burner oh, no. it was just a constant nope whack-a-mole nope, wrong. Nope, yeah. wrong so that was also was like, god why is this such high quality <laughs> and if it's such high quality why isn't it more intuitive <laughs> It was not designed by Apple. Yeah, clearly. So we we did the baseline challenge. Yeah. We all got to be goofy. And the, one, the thing I learned is from watching other reality cooking shows. Yeah, yeah. Every contestant is always scattering around and mm. rushing and crazily going to finish their dishes when right. the judges are like, five, right. four, three, two, one, hands up. And I always have thought they're editing this to make right. it so crazy and everyone's probably already done. Right. To the last second. Really? To the last second and then the painful, I have to stop and put my hands up. Wow. Every challenge. There was not a challenge that I was like, oh, this is good. I'm going to sit back. That's the excitement is the stress yeah. of the countdown clock. Yeah. How are they going to make it? It's huh. more about, I think, the the freak out that I would have going, what, seven minutes? Right. I haven't started. And knowing you, you were probably, because when you're on set, you are half actress, half crew you always like have a one half of your brain is with the crew so i can guarantee you there you must have been calling times out non-stop yes. well yeah they, it was it was difficult and what i did start to do because i am used to that i'm yeah. used to finding the cameras and using the props right. and just even just telling the other actors like hey we got 10 more minutes hey yes. we got three more minutes but i would try to arrange my little cooking area so that a cameraman could get a good shot oh, nice. so that you know here's a bowl i'm gonna move this bowl out of the way nice. and not that i was spending a lot of time on that but it's my instinct yeah and i had mentioned that to one of the producers and they said do not worry about that mm. you're here cooking this isn't about you Sight making lines. a tv show yeah, exactly you know the, exactly. the fun of it i know from watching other shows is seeing people lose their minds trying to be creative and something and yeah and then you go up to the judge and and you know or to jeff our, yeah, our, yeah, yeah. our celebrity chef chairman of the blue team yeah and just sit there while he chews and goes 
Is he gonna die? <laughs> is he gonna smile? Is he gonna spit it out? Well, we're we're running a little late now, but the the last thing that was a part of your uh, this first episode was the meatloaf, the TV dinner. Is there anything <gasps> I did good you remember with about that. that? You did. You did do uh, good. When left to my own devices, as with the chicken and the mac and cheese, I think the mac and cheese came out fine. Mm. Boring, uninspired, perhaps. Sure, sure. I'm sure. I'm sure the cow is still disappointed. <laughs> but left to my own devices, I struggle. Mm. But when we had to recreate the dish that Jeff taught us how to cook, right. I did okay. Good. Yeah, absolutely. I did okay. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. that was a pretty good deal. That meatloaf is really good as well. Nice. And I want to make it again. Did you eat your own meals on any of these? Eventually, yeah. we would take bites of our own stuff. Okay. I mean, you don't eat it. You go present it to the judge. Yeah, It'd yeah, be really yeah, weird. Yeah, yeah. It's like half gone. <laughs> I was hungry, Trust bitch. Me, this is really good. But <laughs> what we did do was Jeff would show us how to cook the whole thing, and then we would taste his. Mm. Everything was really good. That's awesome. It was pretty good in that first episode about yeah. recreating his dish. Very and I was so. really impressed to the point where I looked down, I, I said, I, I cooked that. Yeah. I'm surprised, and I'm impressed, and I'm relieved. Look, you didn't win that. However... You uh, looking at yours. You certainly had a better plate than two and thirds of, them. of the other people. But that this were is what's interesting. Stuff. It's always like who had the best one. Yeah. But there's no prize I, for I, it. No, that's a thing. Nobody really wins. You say, "Oh, your meatloaf was the best, Jenny," yeah. and you get nothing. Nothing. Well, you get the, the satisfaction <laughs> exactly. and and the the pride. <laughs> But every time that would happen, I would think, shouldn't we get something yeah, for right? this? Shouldn't we get, a, even if it's just a little ribbon? What color is the meatloaf awareness ribbon? <laughs> so it was really fun, crazy, stressful, all of that stuff. I will say probably as we talk about all yeah. of these, yep. I learned how to properly chop an onion. Oh, nice. And I use that all the time. Wow. I chop onions up for my dad. Huh. And the way I was doing it prior to this show is painful. Oh, no. To think of someone watching me cut it that way, yeah. which I can't even get into the clusterfuck. <laughs> but now I chop him onions every week and it's like, shoo, 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 shoo. Wow. and I'm really proud Look of it. You. I was chopping the onions once and the other vegetables for him. And I was just on Zoom with a friend hanging out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, I chopped the fuck out of this onion. <laughs> really proud so awesome. there'll be more to come yes. obviously i i will give zero spoilers yes please zero zero spoilers yeah. uh but it was nice in the first episode nobody went home Yay. so that was really because even though we just met we all really loved each other yeah. we we're all beside ourselves like i don't want you to go <laughs> so then everybody got to stay which is really cool that's awesome all right well we will talk way more about all of this uh in the next few episodes as the show continues yes uh but for right now we are running out of time and we do have one last question and it's a pretty decent one here at the end um this is from uh somebody named jen and uh, jen says i got nothing for valentine's day every year since 2016 i get flowers from my husband i picked out a blinged out musical card for him with our five-year-old daughter and gave it to him that morning no explanation what was up we even both worked from home that day, so it made it weird. When I asked the next day, what's up? He says, well, I clean the kitchen. It is totally not clean. And mop the floor. Did he? Where's my thank you for that? There's no apology. No expect something later. He said, I've been sleep deprived, okay? With this attitude, I just feel really sad. I had surgery on Thursday, which was a harrowing experience. I feel like hell. I spent all of Valentine's Day stupidly expecting my flowers to be in the dining room every time I entered. Days earlier, our daughter asked, what does daddy do for you for Valentine's Day? And I had said cheerfully, oh, he always gets me flowers. He knows I love flowers. He went to McDonald's that morning, but couldn't grab some flowers on his way home. Or is expecting flowers or something from your significant other just silly? Anyway, I'm feeling really bummed out. 
what do I say or do now? That's Jen. Jen? Yeah. Clark must have really liked this question because it's left over from Valentine's Day. Yeah, so I've had this one for a while. Sorry, but I thought this was so important Maybe, that yeah. you really, you know, I wanted to get to it as soon as we could. I wonder if they're divorced by now. <laughs> I hope not. I hope not. So did she say they've been married? Five, she said they have a five-year-old daughter. Yeah, well, every year since 2016. 2016. I get flowers from my husband. That's seven years. Four, uh, six. Four, five, six, seven. Six. Yes, that's right. Really? No, six. No, six. it is six. Oh, uh, math. <laughs> Jesus. Worst math in America. But <laughs> I qualify for plenty of shows. <laughs> Any show with the title Worst, <laughs> look for me next season. This is troubling because he had always gotten her flowers yeah. before. There was yeah. a tradition. Yeah. So I would think that there is something else going on yeah. that he might be resentful about or angry about that this is the symptom of. Right. You know, I'm not going to get her flowers, especially well, the way he reacted when you brought it up. Yeah. I mean, especially because, you know, I, I think about people that like to escalate their gift giving, right? And then after a few years, you st you get, you paint yourself into a corner, you know, where it's like, how do I do better than the last year? But if you're getting the same present for someone every year for six years, or five years, and then all of a sudden, randomly, you stop. Yeah. That seems pointed. The year I don't get my dad a gift card for the 99 cent store for his birthday, <laughs> he's going to have to stop and think about our relationship. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, this is why I suspect something else is going on. Yeah, yeah. Because it's very pointed. Very. It's very kind of nasty, the way he responded. Yeah. I would assume that there was the romance and the niceness to the last 2016, six years right, right. of getting the flowers. Right. It probably wasn't like he said, here is your flowers, bitch. Threw it in your face. And then one year he just didn't give you any. <laughs> exactly. Somehow this is twice as bad. <laughs> I'm used to be called a bitch, but I usually get flowers instead. If anyone wants to buy me flowers, my favorite are stargazer lilies. Oh, hi. They nice. smell like spicy bubble gum. Oh. And I love them. So, everyone sends flowers, and where do they send them? Exactly. So you send them to one eight five five Denver. Exactly. Here's a voicemail of the flowers. I smell like cinnamon. I'm delicious. I would think about Jen, right? Jen. Well, I would think about, I would sit and think about what I did wrong and, and drive myself crazy. Mm. And then someone would say, it's his fucking yeah, problem. Yeah, exactly. So I would ask him with the evidence, with yeah. the history. Yeah. You've given me flowers every year. You know, I love it. It's yeah. Valentine's Day. It's not about where are my flowers. Right. It's about where are you and what's going on that you didn't get them, that you didn't have that right. thoughtfulness or that gesture for me. This is a very, very specific, it's Valentine's yeah. Day. These are flowers. This yeah. very romantic uh, setup. So for that to be missing, changed, re rescinded, there's something else probably going on, yeah. which you might want to actually sit down, talk to him about. Right. But that's the tack. It's not, you didn't give me flowers. Right. Like, you owe me something. Right. But this is, seems like more, because why would this have happened? Exactly. Or you could just go full-on guilt. Oh. And tell your daughter to go in and say, Mommy's really sad because she didn't get any flowers for <laughs> Valentine's Day. I hope she's not crying still. Why did you do that, Daddy? Or what if I throw this out? Start buying yourself your own flowers. Oh, snap. Right? With a card from some other quote-unquote man. Hey -oh. Let me give you... Now I'm into giving the bad advice. Right? 
<laughs> Let's make this into an 80s movie gone awry. There you go. And yeah, you could get the, the flowers you want. Yeah. And maybe that's a way to start the conversation. There you go. By saying, I guess I still love me. <laughs> I like that. I'm glad we have that prenup. I like that. That's a, that's a pretty good, bad advice. Ooh, and the, the little girl should also say, I don't want to have to choose who I'm going to live with. <laughs> That's Mommy some... says you don't love her anymore. Yes, there's a lot going on in your question. I've given you excellent, horrible, and <laughs> deadly advice. Oh, God. And so I hope something works. Yeah. Continue to enjoy Worst Cooks. Come back and you will yes. hear more tales yes. as the episodes are released of my struggles and sweatiness. The dirty salaciousness that happened behind the scenes. I made love to that tri-tip. <laughs> and I do it again. That's why it tastes so good. Um, <laughs> oh God, the special basting. <laughs> oh Gross, let's move on, let's move All on. All right, okay. Uh, if you guys are out there, if you have questions uh, or a decision that's weighing heavily on you, please send it to us and let LB ease your burden. Send us your problems at AskLoriBeth.com. Go to follow us on all the socials at AskLoriBeth, or just leave us a message with your voice at 1-855-336-2374. That's 1-855-DENBERG or 1-855-DENBERG. And you can find me at LB Denberg on Instagram, at Lori Beth Denberg on Twitter, and at the Lori Beth Denberg fan page on Facebook. You can see me Sunday Yay! nights at nine on the Sunday Food Network. At nine. On uh, Worst Cooks in America. And I live up to the name. <laughs> and you can book me for a personalized video message for a loved one or enemy <laughs> at. <laughs> or your husband that forgot to give you flowers. Exactly. Oh, Jen. <laughs> Jen. <laughs> Book me for a cameo there you go. to talk to your husband. <laughs> All right, I've given her good, bad, deadly, and self-serving advice. There you go, I like it. Yeah, so you can book me for such a video at cameo.com slash Lori Beth. Thank you guys for listening. We'll talk to you next week. Goodbye, babies. <laughs> Bad Advice stars Lori Beth Denberg and Clark Crozier. The show is produced by me, Jeremy Balin, and part of the Seltzer Kings Network. Our theme song is written and performed by Natty Ward. If you or someone you love is in need of some bad advice, you can submit your own question on our socials, all of which are Ask Lori Beth, or on our website at AskLoriBeth.com, or for a nostalgic twist, you can call 1-855-DENBERG. That's right, 1-855-336-2374, and leave your question there. Thanks for listening.